Sometimes I go days and weeks without doing what? Without restarting my phone. Who does that, right? Who really restarts their phone nowadays? No one does. It's always on. It's either off, off or on or charging, but it's always on, okay? Then there are moments where my volume doesn't work and the headphones aren't working, the app is delayed, this is lagging, that's not opening. And I realize that, you know what? It needs a little bit of a reset. Once you reset the phone, everything kind of sets into place now. We're back to our defaults and we're good to go. The problem is that we don't allow ourselves to reset sometimes. There's too much chaos happening outside of us for us to even stop and think about ourselves. You know how many times I've heard individuals come to me and tell me that, you know, you talk about this on the member and that on the member, this mustahab act and this dhikr and that dua. I wish I had a moment, a moment to sit there and just enjoy, let's say, a cup of tea. I don't. I work 10 hours, I commute two hours, I have small kids, by the time I get home, I'm exhausted. If I have a moment to have a tea with my spouse, you know, it's a big deal. Now, at least, hopefully that time is there. That commute time is cut. Getting ready in the morning is cut, for example, right? All those things are cut. You have a little bit more time. The work might have continued, but now you have that time, that forsat, that moment to do what? To reset, to stop for a moment, close everything out, and understand what is going on. When the doors on the outside are open, are closed, it's high time that we begin to move back on the inside. When Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, says that when we detach ourselves from people, we end up attaching ourselves to Allah, let's first understand and look at the detachment of people to be a positive opportunity. That detachment should result in the attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, that same mawla, that same imam talks about the fact the sickness and the cure is all where? Not outside of you, not outside your front door, not at the pharmacy, it's all inside of you. The sickness is inside of you, the cure is inside of you. What you look for outside of you is actually inside of you the whole time. It's a matter of you what? Turning the way you look and looking inward and seeing, oh my goodness, I'm not a normal creation. I'm a grand universe in front of me. And this, these are moments when everything else outside of us is closed off. We are forced to look inward. When we look inward, certain things now come about. Okay? The first thing is that we end up now treading the path of contemplation. It's bound to happen. These past few weeks, a lot of you, myself included, we must wonder, where is this going? Even if this pandemic is over, even if, you know, they say, okay, now we can, you know, kind of ease up on the social distancing, what will the new normal look like? Right? Is it completely the same? Is it just like it was before? You know, all of that, what's going to happen here? How's that going to happen? Right? And then on top of that, where am I going to be? And on top of that, some people, you know, seem to be obsessed. Is this the apocalypse? Is this the end of times? Is the imam coming? What's going to happen? How many emails and, and, and messages I receive, Sayyid, is there a hadith about pandemic before the arrival of the imam? Can you check this clip of that speech? Can you, can you confirm this hadith? Is this authentic? And we just want to know, is this it? Is this it? And therein lies the beauty. At least we're thinking about things that we didn't think about before. Why? We are too busy running on the, uh, on the wheel. We're too busy driving from point A to point B to point C. That's all we were doing. We became robotic. We became like somebody that was just habitual, in, out, in, out. Now all of a sudden, everything has closed. I still remember. I remember my first six months in Iran, where I first arrived, my wife and I. And I'm coming from Toronto, where I'm sitting right now in front of you. And I came from a very hustle bustle community. It's a large city. It's a huge, it's, it's, it's a very active community, right? And my family, both my families were actively involved in the community. So there was constant go, 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 go time. We get to Iran in the first six months and there's a halt in our life, right? Everything is kind of just stay at home and just wait. Come on, uh, come on Saturday to give your interview, then come to fill this form out, then come, all of a sudden, there's no, nobody ringing on our doorbell, there's nowhere to go at 6 p.m., no program at the center, just me and my wife and everything halted. And for the first few months, we were just going like, okay, what's, what's going on, what's happening? And then we realized this is actually very, very important. It's therapeutic to stop for a moment and just kind of take a breath, right? And find your me time. Coming home at night, all that is all gone. We're home home with our families. If you're like me, you're homeschooling three kids during the day. 
and somehow trying to prepare for a lecture at night and uh, you know with, with with both the husband and the wife working at from, from home as well it's not easy i'm not saying oh we're on vacation we're eating grapes and we're fanning ourselves and we're binge watching and we're sleeping until 11 or 12 noon no but this is an opportunity that we are going to look back on and say wow you remember all that time we had to spring clean our drawers to clean our basement, to go through our closet, and to go through our soul. And to understand that yes, while people are dying, while there is no cure, there's no vaccination, right? We're running out of this, these supplies and that supplies and this and that, those sanctions and, 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 and this lockdown, there is a beauty to be found in this era. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not create evil. Remember that, please. Allah does not create evil. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, and there's a whole discussion on whether or not this is all coming from Allah. Let's not always relieve us as human race of our responsibility. Sometimes our neglect, our negligence, our ignorance, our ego puts us in this pandemic era that we're in. But even if we are to accept the fact that this has Allah's doing, Allah is able now to cure the, the, the global village, and not allow this pandemic to spread. Let's take that route for a moment. Let's understand how God works sometimes. As a reminder for all of you, that God does place us in temporary pain for an ultimate pleasure. And sometimes he knows us better than we know ourselves. That sometimes this human has to walk through darkness to appreciate the light in front of them. Okay, and sometimes he does that. And sometimes he does it on a global scale. Sometimes he does it on an individual scale. And for us to be caught up on that temporary moment and not and lose sight of the eventual goal is an opportunity that has gone wasted.